All right, guys, we're looking at an Arcan. It's the brand. 3.25 tons XL. The model number is XL325R. And the uh, problem I have with this jack is it leaks at the seals, at the pistons down here. So we're going to take this apart real quick and see if um, I can just replace the seals in these pistons without taking the whole thing apart. And I noticed on eBay they do sell a seal kit, but um, I have an assortment of seals. So we're going to see if I happen to have them in stock. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and pop these two bolts out and see if we can keep these springs from flying. They look like they're pretty loose. I can push up and down on them with my hand so they shouldn't go anywhere and we'll get this jack out of the way. And then we'll see if just removing these two things if I can work with the seals just right here without taking anything else apart. So that's what we're gonna do now and then we'll come back. Anyway, okay, so you can see now that we removed the handle, okay? And on this side of the handle, Inside the handle there is a square and a square piece, so that's where this square goes into. And then these rollers here, it just rolls on it. Now I've removed one of the pistons, but I wanted to show you how easy it comes off. So you have literally the spring. So what you do is you just grab the metal part here like this, and you start working it out, and it'll come out. So you have the spring, and then you have this metal brace, and then you have a washer. That goes on it. Now these are the two seals that usually leak on it. So when it's going up and down, up and down, it just starts to leak. And that's usually what your leak is. You can see how on this one, it's all wet from here down. And so we're going to try to replace just these two seals. So I'm going to go ahead and take one off now. So you'll see there, there's a nylon seal and a rubber seal, but the rubber seal, I believe, is the seal that's actually gonna seal it. The nylon seals are just guides, so when they start leaking, and then you have here a, a, a clip of some sort, but it doesn't come apart. So I wanna get these rubber seals out. I'm not even sure how to replace the white seals unless they're really soft when they're new. What we wanna try to do is get that off. And it's a little bit tight. Is it showing in the video what I'm doing here? Yeah. It looks like it's gonna break when I do this, but we'll see. Show them what kind of tool you're using. Yeah. All right. So now I just want to try to work it over the edge here. I can use my finger. There it is. I got it off. And this seal is pretty dried out, but you can see I still have the Teflon on it. I'm not even gonna mess with the Teflon. We're just gonna to try to replace the rubber seal because that Teflon that's interesting. Like I don't even know how they would get those on if we ordered the new ones with Teflon. So we're just gonna remove that. <clears throat> now what I wanna do is see if I have seals. So I got a bunch of seals at, uh, in a seal kit from Harbor Freight. And so we're gonna see if any of those seals will fit that. And we'll just try to take it um, like this with the piston and we're just gonna try to put it in and see, see how it goes in. Um, and that's how we're gonna see if the seal will fit or not fit when I uh, put the new seal on, if I need to. But usually you can just tell by looking at this seal how thick it is, and you'll pretty much know. This one's just flattened out, but it should just be a regular round seal. Um, and then I also want to loosen this, I think, so that it bleeds air, so that when I'm putting that seal in, it's, uh, it's not doing anything. So what I might do is remove this, oops, from here. Um, maybe, maybe not. I think all I have to really do is get this on here like this and see if I can get it in there enough to, there we go, and just turn it. Uh, that should be it right there, actually, huh? As long as I turned it. Yep, there we go. So it's loose. I could probably loosen that before you take this all apart. I just didn't, didn't know, because this is the first time. So anyway, this is loose. That way, when I push that in, it, it bleeds off. So we're going to get our seal kit, and I'll be right back. I'll show you the seal kit when we get All right, so we got the new seals on. You can see they fit on pretty nicely. Um, we actually use the metric ones. So I'm going to come over here, and the 114 is the number in the metric box. 114, that's the one we used. Uh, we did some comparisons. I'm going to show you guys. Take another 114 off here. And uh, I basically just came over here. And I set it down, and then I took one of these seals and set it over the top of it 
to see how it sat and it sat pretty nicely like almost exactly the same now if i took a the other one that we were looking at earlier um i believe that one was i think it was this one maybe it was that one but it was a little tight tighter and then it was too big so i tried it both ways so this one seemed to fit the best um, again i didn't replace the nylon i just replaced the rubber seals what I want to do now is get a little bit of hydraulic fluid around it. But um, as you can see, I can get it started. Just work them in nicely and then get to the second one. And now they're in and it's doing good. So we want to, again, I'm going to get some fluid around it. Maybe I can get some from in here. I don't know. We'll see if I can get some. I might have some hydraulic fluid in the cabinet. So anyway, that's where we're at now. We're going to end up putting this back together right now. We have to put the... Um, big washer on like this make sure it's clean push it around um, you can gently go over the seals and they go over them just like that and then you have to put this in like this and then the spring has to go on now you can put the spring on here first if you want just like that and then you can guide these in again i'm going to go ahead and lubricate this with some hydraulic fluid before i put it in and then we'll slide that one in so we'll be back all right so we got this side in it went in nicely now we're working on this side like i said we just pulled this side out and when we noticed when we got this side out the piston is actually smaller on this side so it's going to use smaller seals so i'll let you know what seals we use here in a minute but again there's your spring there's your cover and then you have the top Plate. Now I'm taking all this apart because I want to clean um, and get all the grease and dirt and everything off of these before I put any new seals on or anything else. So. But it comes apart pretty easy. As you can see, I'm pretty much doing this one-handed. So there's that. And then there's the piston. So you really want to um, clean, get these two seals off again, and then replace the seals. So we'll see what we can find for seals for that. And I'll let you know the number on those. Um, over here, the fluid was coming out quite a bit. This side seemed like it was full and that side was leaking. Or uh, I don't know if it's from us pushing this side up and down, if it forced this one to push fluid out of it, but it was definitely pushing some fluid out of it. So um, when we're ready to put the other one back in, um, I just closed this just now because I didn't want it leaking anymore. And I think it's just air traveling. But we're gonna wipe all this out, the fluids to the top. So when we're ready to put the new seal in, We'll open it so that it can go in and out without leaking oil everywhere. So right now it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty clean right there. I should, and uh, I use this hydraulic jack oil. I think I may have gotten that at Harbor Freight. I'm not 100% on that. It's been a while, but that's been sitting in the cabinet. And that's what I use just to lube the seal. So we're going to go ahead and remove these now again with a pick. And uh, we'll be back. All right, so we got it all back together. We cleaned it all so we could look for drips of leaks. Before we would jack up even like my ATV, you'd pump it a few times and you would see drips on the ground. And there's actually no drips on the ground. We're leaving it jacked up like this for a while just to see if it holds. Okay guys, so in the process of buttoning up this video, I noticed that I hadn't finished uh, telling you guys which seals I used for both pistons. I used the 114 for the larger piston, the one I removed first. And I used a 111 for the smaller piston, the one I removed second. Um, so anyway, what I did was, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, um, I took the old seal and I put the 111 over the top of it and made sure they butted up. So these are the original seals that were in it. I lost one of them on the ground somewhere. But um, So for example, <clears throat> um, I took the 111 here and I just set it right over the top of the original one and then checked it to make sure they looked the same. And they did. And then I wanted to show you guys something else with the thicknesses on these. So you can check the thicknesses on these, but they're not um, real accurate. So when you take a used seal, um, if you look right here on the, um, the seal kit, on this side you have SAE, it says right there. Uh, let's see if I can read. It's in inches, so you have standard, 
Then if you look over here, you have metric. And so the, the blue bucket is metric and the red bucket is standard. And it also inside of here has the same exact standard and metric. So if you open this, let's see if I can get it open. There we go. Brand new. You have the uh, same exact dimensions, the uh, 1 16th, 3 30 seconds, 1 8th, and 3 16th. And you'll see over here, they're exactly the same. Um, so each one of these kits, you can check your old seals to see if you have a metric seal or a standard seal. The only problem is if you use a used seal, it tends to squish on the outside, which makes this, uh, it squishes on the outside because it goes into something and squishes and then it makes it thicker here. So one of the problems I was having was uh, when I put it in the actual size, you had to really push it in. If you went to the next size, you'd have the illusion that that was loose. And then if you came over here on the eighth inch, you'd get the illusion that this was an, an eighth inch, but it actually was still a little loose because it does just slide in. So what you really want to do is kind of check the seal and go, okay, there's no way I could get this in the 330 seconds. But if I come over here to the 2.5, I am able to push it in. So it ended up being a the 2.5 or 2.4. Um, it's interesting when I was looking at these, if you look really close, it actually says it looks like 2.5. So if you go up to the chart here and you, and you look at the uh, chart, you'll see here it says section 1.9. And then over here it says section 2.4. So they don't even make a 2.5. I think they made a mistake on this uh, on the case when they were putting it together, and it's actually 2.4. So what I did was I went to the section 2.4s, and if you look at this section, um, it tells you the inner diameter and the outer diameter, and it tells you where it is. So anything between 111 and, let's see, 116 on 111, 112, 13, 14, 15, all the way to 16 is 2.4 thickness. So I went over to the 111s, which would have started right here, and then it went all the way up to 116. They are supposed to be exactly the same thickness, just bigger and smaller. So that's how I came up with the conclusion. Um, like I said, I just topped this gaskets or the seals on top of each other, and then I double checked the thickness. Um, we're going on day three now since I've repaired the um, the jack and I've had no leaks or no issues with it. Um, so jack is fixed and working great. And I hope this video helped you guys out. One other thing I did want to mention that I didn't mention uh, in the video is that this is a Costco brand uh, floor jack. These were originally sold at Costco. Um, so anyway, anybody that's interested in buying one of these types of jacks, you can get them at Costco.